how to turn your Minecraft Java Edition single player world into a 24 seven multiplayer server. The first thing you need to do is open up your Minecraft launcher and left click on single player. Once you've done that guys, you'll be in the world selection screen where you'll be able to see a list of all your single player worlds. As you can see guys, I only have one single player world and it's called Websplaining. This will be the single player world that I'm going to be turning into a multiplayer server. Select the single player world that you'd like to turn into a multiplayer server by simply left clicking on it. Once you've done that guys, left click on play selected world. You'll now be taken into your single player world. As you can see guys, we're inside my single player world now and you can see my house right in front of us. I strongly recommend that you go into your single player world and deposit all your inventory items and all the items you are currently wearing into a chest. So I'm just going to go into my house now guys and I'm going to deposit all these items into this chest here. So I'm just going to put all my inventory items into the chest and I'm currently wearing no items. So therefore I have nothing to deposit. Great, so now I'm just going to go outside of my house guys. And I'm going to press escape on my keyboard and I'm going to left click on save and quit to title. This will save the changes you have just made to your world. Next guys, left click again on single player to be taken back to the world select screen. Left click again on the world that you would like to turn into a multiplayer server. And this time left click on edit. Once you've done that guys, left click on open world folder. A new window will open taking you into your Minecraft world files. We need to make a copy of these files to use them to make our multiplayer server. Before we make a copy of these files, we're going to have to close out of our Minecraft launcher. So I'm just going to open back up my Minecraft launcher here. I'm going to left click on cancel. I'm going to left click on cancel again, and I'm going to left click on quit game. Once you've done that guys, the Minecraft launcher will close. Now we can make a copy of our single player world files. As you can see guys, we are in the web splaining folder, which is the name of my single player world. You'll also be in the folder for the world that you're going to be turning into a multiplayer server. To make a copy of your Minecraft single player world files, simply left click and highlight all the files in the folder. Once you've done that guys, right click on any of the selected files and left click on copy and you'll copy to clipboard all your Minecraft single player world files. Now you can close out of your Minecraft single player world folder by pressing the X at the top right hand corner here. Once you've done that guys, you'll be on your desktop. The next thing we need to do is make a new folder. So I'm just going to right click anywhere on my desktop here and I'm going to hover over new and then I'm going to left click on folder. And as you can see guys, we have created a new folder folder. This folder is going to house all our Minecraft single player world files for the single player world, in my case called Websplaining. We're going to need to give this new folder a very specific name. The name we're going to call it is World. Once you've named your new folder World, hit enter. Again guys, this new folder must be called World. Once you've created and named your new folder World, double click on it to be taken into that folder. Once you're inside your world folder, simply right click anywhere inside the folder and left click on paste to paste in your Minecraft single player world files that we copied to clipboard earlier. Great guys, once you've done that, you can close out of this folder. All right, so we've got our world folder here containing all our single player world files. The next thing we need to do is get ourselves a server to upload these world files onto. To do this, open up your browser and navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link for the server hosting provider called Linode. This referral link will give you $100 free Linode cloud credit for you to test out Linode servers free for 60 days. I'll put my referral link in the video description below so you can easily click on it. Once you've clicked on my referral link guys, you'll be taken to the following Linode webpage. As you can see guys, the webpage says, see if Linode works for you with $100 in credit. To get this free credit guys, you'll need to sign up to Linode. You have three methods that you can sign up with. You can sign up with Google, your GitHub account, or email. Most likely guys, you're going to be signing up with email, so simply left click on email. Next, you'll need to create your Linode account where you'll need to enter your email address, pick a username, and pick a password. Once you've done that guys, left click on continue, and then you'll be taken to the billing stage where you'll need to add your billing details, and then finally you'll be taken to the third and final stage. Once you've done that guys, you'll most likely receive an email from Linode to confirm the creation of your account. So make sure you open up that email from Linode 
and activate your Linode account. Once you've done that, guys, sign into your Linode account. Now, I already have a Linode account, so I'm not going to be creating another one. So I'm just simply going to scroll all the way down here. And as you can see, Linode says, already have an account, which I do, log in. So I'm just going to left click on log in here. And as you can see, it says log in with Linode. So I'm just going to enter my Linode username and my password. So I'm just going to do that now, guys. Once you've activated your Linode account and signed into it, you'll be credited $100 free credits to test out Linode servers free for 60 days. If, of course, you signed up to Linode using my referral link. All right, guys, once you've signed in, you'll be on your Linode dashboard. Once you're here, you'll need to create a Linode server. As you can see, I already have a couple of servers running on Linode already. To create a new Linode server, navigate to the top left hand corner and left click on Linodes. Next, at the top left hand corner here, you should see a button in blue called create. Simply left click on it. Once you've done that guys, you should be able to see a list of services from Linode. The option that we want guys is Linode. Linodes are high performance SSD Linux servers. So all I'm going to do now guys is left click on Linode. Great, we'll now be taken to the Linode server creation page. The first thing we'll need to do is choose a distribution. So make sure you're in the distributions tab here by left clicking on distributions. Under Underneath, you'll have the ability to choose a distribution. So as you can see, under the word images, left click on this arrow here and look for Ubuntu. As you can see guys, Ubuntu is right here. There's lots of different versions of Ubuntu. The version that we're going to be going for guys is the latest Ubuntu version, which at the time of recording of this video is 21.10. Whenever you watch this video, there might be a new version of Ubuntu. So you can select that latest version if you want. Again, the latest version of Ubuntu offered by Linode at the time of recording of this video is Ubuntu 21.10. So I'm just going to left click on it to select it. Next is the region or location of your server. Select the arrow here under region to be greeted with a drop down list of all the server regions offered by Linode. So as you can see guys, there's quite a few different regions here. I'm based in Europe, so I'm going to be going with a European server. For you, you might be based in North America or the Asia Pacific region. So as you can see, there's two European servers offered by Linode, London, UK and Frankfurt, Germany. The server closest to me guys is going to be London, so I'm just going to left click on London UK here to select it. Next is Linode plan. So I'm just going to scroll down a bit here just so we can see everything a bit better. For the Linode plan guys, left click on shared CPU as this is one of the cheapest Linode plans that you can create. So as you can see, Linode gives you a brief description of what a shared CPU is. Shared CPU instances are good for medium duty workloads and are a good mix of performance, resources and price. So as you can see guys, the cheapest Linode plan is the Nanode one gigabyte, which is five dollars a month or zero point zero zero seven five dollars an hour you get one gigabyte of ram one cpu core and 25 gigabytes of storage which should be enough to host you and a couple of friends on your minecraft multiplayer server if your world is quite large and you're going to be hosting multiple friends then it's better to go with the linode two gigabyte plan which is ten dollars a month and will give you two gigabytes of ram one CPU and 50 gigabytes of storage. You can always start with a Nanode plan for $5 and upgrade later if you need a bigger server. So don't worry guys. I'll also most likely make a video on how you can upgrade your Linode server to a new plan. I'll put that link to the video in this video description below and as a card at the top right hand corner. Great, for this video guys, as it's a video demonstration, I'm going to be going with the $5 a month server. So I'm simply going to left click on this circle here to select the $5 Nanode one gigabyte Linode plan. Great, continue scrolling down until you see Linode label. For your Linode label guys, it's basically the name of your Linode server. You can call this whatever you want just as long as you recognize it and know what it is. So I'm just going to left click on this box and delete what's currently there. And I'm going to call it MC, short for Minecraft, server altogether. Make sure you have no special characters and no spaces in the Linode label name. I'm not going to be adding any tags. And the next thing is root password. This is the password that we're going to be using to connect to our server to upload our single player world files and configure our multiplayer server. For this root password guys, make sure it's memorable and also make sure it's different to the password that you signed up to Linode with. The root password is completely separate to that and is specific 
public to this Minecraft multiplayer server. So I'm just going to make a password and enter it into this text box here. Great, once you've chosen a root password, scroll down. We're not going to be adding any SSH keys and we're not going to be attaching a VLAN. Continue scrolling down until you see add-ons. Again, for add-ons guys, we're not going to be checking any of these options as we just want a basic $5 a month server to host our Minecraft multiplayer server on. To the right hand side of the web page, you'll be able to see the Linode summary of the configurations you have just made to your server. So as you can see, the distribution is going to be Ubuntu, the location of my server is going to be the UK London. The server that we're going with is Nanode one gigabyte. The Linode label is MC server and the cost is $5 a month. Once you're happy with the Linode summary guys, simply left click on create Linode. Once you've clicked on create Linode guys, you'll be taken to your server dashboard where as you can see at the top left hand corner here, our Linode server called MC server is provisioning. Linode is basically creating our server with all the configurations and booting it up for us. I'll be back with you guys once our Linode server is running. All right guys, I'm back. And as you can see, the status has changed from provisioning to running now. Once your server is running, navigate to the top left hand corner and left click on Linodes. You'll now be able to see a list of all your Linode servers. As you can see guys, our newest server with a label of MC server is now running. We can see our plan, the IP address of our server, the region and the backup status. To connect to the Linode server that we just created guys, we're going to need our server's IP address. Underneath IP address here, you'll be able to see the IP address of your Linode server. In my case, it's 109.74.198.129. Copy this IP address by simply left clicking on the clipboard icon here. Great, once you've got the IP address of your Linode server copied, we will need to upload our single player world files onto our Linode server. To do this, we're going to be using a client called WinSCP, which allows us to transfer files from our computer via the SFTP protocol to our server. If you don't have WinSCP already installed on your computer, I'll put a link to a video of mine in the video description below titled how to download and install WinSCP or how to transfer files using SFTP in WinSCP. So I'm just going to minimize my browser now guys to be taken back to my desktop and I'm going to locate the WinSCP shortcut. As you can see guys, for me it's right here. I'm just going to double click on it to open it. Just a note, if you're on a Mac or Linux operating system, you will need to download another SFTP client as WinSCP is for Windows operating systems only. Once you've opened up WinSCP, you'll be greeted with a login window for your session. Underneath session, you'll see file protocol. As you can see, it's currently set to SFTP. If the file protocol is not set as SFTP, left click on the arrow and select SFTP. Next is hostname. The hostname of your server is the IP address of our Linode server, which we copied earlier. So all I'm going to do now guys, is left click in this text box here, right click and left click on paste to paste in the IP address of our Linode server. For the port number guys, leave it as 22. Underneath is username. For the username guys, enter the word root. This username will be the same for your server also. For the password guys, this is the root password that you created for your Linode server. So I'm just going to enter my root password in now guys. Once you've entered in your root password, simply left click on login. Once you've clicked on login guys, you'll receive this warning message from WinSCP when you first connect to your Linode server, which says continue connecting to an unknown server and add its host key to a cache. Now, of course, guys, this is not an unknown server that you're trying to connect to as you're trying to connect to your Linode server that you created. So to continue connecting to your server, simply left click on yes. Once you've done that, guys, you'll be connected to your Linode server via the SFTP protocol. On the left hand side here, guys, you can see all the files on your computer in the location that you're in. So as you can see, the location that I'm in is on my desktop. On the right hand side here is all the files and folders on your Linode server. As you can see guys, we're in the root directory and of course it's blank as we've not added any files yet. On the left hand side guys, if you're not currently on your desktop, navigate to the very top here and look for the folder with the two dots 
and double click on it. Once you've done that guys, look for where it says desktop and double click on desktop. Once you're here guys, look for the world folder which has all your Minecraft single player world files. As you can see guys, the world folder is right here on my desktop. If you save the world folder to another destination guys, make sure you navigate to it. Once you've found your world folder guys, we're going to need to upload this world folder onto our Linode server. To do this, simply left click on it to select it, left click again and hold and drag it into your Linode server on the right hand side here. Once you've done that guys, let go and the world folder will begin uploading from your PC onto your Linode server. As you can see guys, at the very bottom, you can see the files from the world folder that are being transferred to your Linode server. Once the transfer has completed guys, if you look to the right hand side, you'll now have a copy of your world folder. Once you've uploaded a copy of your world folder containing your Minecraft single player world files onto your Linode server, we can close out of the WinSCP client as we no longer need it. So all I'm going to do now guys, is navigate to the top right hand corner and left click on the X and then I'm going to left click on yes to terminate the session. Once you've done that guys, you'll be back on your PC's desktop. The next thing we need to do is to connect to our server using an SSH client. The client that I'm going to be using is called Putty. If you don't have Putty yet, I'll put a link in the video description below and a card at the top right hand corner of this video titled how to install Putty on Windows. If you're on another operating system guys, you'll need to find an alternative SSH client like Putty for that operating system. Again guys, for this video, I'm going to be using the SSH client called Putty. So I'm just going to double click on the Putty shortcut here on my desktop and as you can see guys, the putty configuration window opens. On the right hand side here, you should see basic options for your putty session. Specify the destination you want to connect to and underneath it says host name or IP address. In here guys, we're going to need to paste in the IP address of our Linode server. So again, we're going to need to open back up our browser here and copy the IP address for our Linode server. So I'm just going to left click on the clipboard icon here to copy the IP address for my server, which again is 109.74.198.129. Once you've copied the IP address of your server, guys, minimize your browser window. Go back to your putty client and left click on the text box underneath hostname or IP address. Right click on it and left click on paste. For the port, leave it as 22. For the connection type, make sure the SSH protocol is selected and left click on open. Once you've done that, guys, you'll be greeted with a security alert from Putty, similar to the security alert you received when you first connected to WinSCP. So as you can see, Putty says, the server's host key is not cached in the registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. Now, of course, guys, we know that we are connecting to our own server as we put in the IP address of our Linode server. To connect to your server, simply left click on accept. Once you've done that guys, the putty terminal window will open. At the top of putty here, it says login as. I'm just going to maximize this window here for better viewing. For login as guys, we're going to type our Linode username, which in both our cases is root. Once you've typed your username in guys, hit enter on your keyboard. Next, Putty will ask you to enter your password for your server. This is the same root password that you made for your Linode server and the same root password that you use to connect to your server using WinSCP. So I'm just going to type my password in and hit enter. And there we go guys, we have now successfully connected to our server using the SSH protocol. In this terminal window, we'll be configuring our Minecraft server using commands. The first command we're going to be entering into this terminal window is the command to update our server. Simply type apt space update. Once you've typed that in guys, hit enter and your server will begin to update. I'll be back with you guys once the update has finished. All right guys, I'm back. And just to remind you that all the commands used in today's video will be in the video description below. The next command we're going to be typing in is the command to download the server.jar file from minecraft.net. First, we're going to need to copy the link address for the server.jar file. So I'm just going to open up my browser and I'm going to navigate to the second tab here. In your case, guys, you're going to need to open a second tab and then navigate to the following URL address, which is https colon slash slash 
www.minecraft.net slash en dash us slash download slash server. Once you're here guys, you'll be on the Minecraft Java Edition server download page. Towards the middle of the top of the page here, you should see a sentence which mentions download. So as you can see, the sentence is right here and it says download Minecraft underscore server dot one dot one seven dot one dot jar and run it with the following command we'll get to this command in a bit for now we're just interested in this sentence here so as you can see guys minecraft underscore server dot one dot one seven dot one dot jar is a hyperlinked piece of text the numbers in the name of the server dot jar file corresponds to the minecraft server version that you're going to be downloading at the time of recording of this video 1.17.1.jar jar is the latest Minecraft server.jar file. When you watch this video, the version might be different, but that's okay guys, the process is the same. Once you've found this sentence guys, hover over the Minecraft underscore server and whatever version it is, dot .jar, and right click on it, and then left click on copy link address. This will copy the link address for the jar file. Next, open up your putty terminal window once again, and type the following command, wget, space and then right click in your putty terminal window here to paste in the link you just copied and then hit enter and your server.jar file will be downloaded onto your server. To run the server.jar file you require Java 16 or above. For today's video I'm going to be downloading and installing Java 16 onto our server. In the future there may be a newer version of Java that's available. All you'll need to do guys is edit the command and change the number 16 to whatever the new version is. So for example example, if the newest version of Java is 17, just replace the 16 with the number 17. Great, now let's type the command to download Java onto our server. Type the following, apt space install space open jdk dash 16 dash jre dash headless. Once you've typed in the following command guys, hit enter and you'll start the installation process of Java 16. Your server will then ask you, do you want to continue, why or no, Y for yes and N for no. Of course guys, we want to continue with this installation of Java, so type Y and hit enter. Java will then begin downloading and installing onto your server. I'll be back with you guys once the installation has finished. All right guys, I'm back. Java has now been installed onto our server. The next command we're going to need to enter into our CMD terminal window is the command to start our server. To get this command, open back up your browser back to the Minecraft Java edition server download page where we copied the link address for the server.jar file. Underneath the server.jar file, there is a command in purple here, and this is the command we're going to be copying and pasting into the putty terminal window. So all I'm going to do now, guys, is highlight the entire purple command here and right click on it, and then left click on copy. Once you've done that, guys, open back up the putty terminal window here and simply right click to paste. Great, guys, we now have pasted in the following command, java-xmx1024m dash xms 1024m dash jar minecraft server dot one dot one seven dot one dot jar no gui the server dot jar file that we downloaded guys is actually called server dot jar and not minecraft underscore server dot one dot one seven dot one dot jar so we're going to need to edit this command line before we press enter and simply replace the text directly in front of dot jar with server so all i'm going to do now guys is delete everything directly in front of dot jar and then simply type server dot jar space no GUI. This edited command guys will be the same for any new version of Minecraft and again this command will be in the video description below. Once you've got the following command entered into your putty terminal window hit enter on your keyboard to execute the command. When you first execute the command to start your Minecraft server it won't immediately start and that is because we need to edit a specific text document. So as you can see our putty terminal window says you need to agree to the EULA in order to run the server go to the eula.txt for more info. The EULA TXT file is a text document file that we're going to need to edit. We can edit this file directly in the terminal window here. To edit the eula.txt file, simply type nano space the name of the file that you want to edit. So of course, we want to edit the eula.txt file, so simply type eula 
.txt and then hit enter. You'll then be inside the EULA TXT file. Use your arrow keys on your keyboard to get to the line which says EULA equals false. We're going to be changing EULA equals false to EULA equals true. Again, use the arrow keys on your keyboard to get in front of the word false and then start deleting the word false. Once you've deleted the word false, type true. The line should now read EULA equals true. To save the changes you have just made to the EULA text document, guys, we're going to need to press two keys on our keyboard at the same time. These two keys are Control plus O. So I'm just going to press Control plus O at the same time to save the changes we have just made. And as you can see at the bottom here of the terminal window, it says file name to write eula.txt. Here you can change the name of your file. We don't want to change the name of our file, so just simply hit enter on your keyboard to save the changes to the eula.txt document that you've just made. To exit the nano text editor, guys, we're going to need to press two keys on our keyboard once again, and this time we're going to be pressing Control plus X at the same time. So I'm just going to press Control plus X to exit out of nano. Great, we've now exited out of the nano text editor. The next command we're going to need to type in here is the command to install screen. Installing screen onto your server will allow your Minecraft server to run 24 seven, even when you decide to close out of the putty terminal window. You must install this if you want your server to run 24 seven, even when you're not online. To install screen, simply type the following command, apt space install space screen. Once you've typed that in guys, hit enter on your keyboard and screen will be installed. To start screen, type the word screen and then hit enter. As you can see guys, screen has now started. Once screen has started, hit enter again on your keyboard. And now we can finally start our Minecraft server. To start our Minecraft server, we're going to need to grab the start server command. So open back up your browser here and copy the start server command once again. So I'm just going to right click on it again and I'm going to left click on copy. Open back up the putty terminal window and right click to paste. Again guys, for this command, we're going to need to delete Minecraft underscore server dot one dot one seven Dot one. So I'm going to start deleting everything here. And now type server dot jar space no GUI and then hit enter. Your Minecraft server will then begin starting and using your single player world files to create your server. I'll be back with you guys once our server is running. All right guys, I'm back. And as you can see, our Minecraft server is now running. Now, if you get a message guys, similar to this, which says can't keep up, is the server overloaded, running, and then a certain MS, and then a certain value of ticks behind. This may be due to the fact that your Minecraft single player world is very large and may require a bigger Linode server to run it on. So for this video, I use the $5 a month plan. You might need the $10 a month plan. The $5 a month plan, even though I'm receiving this message, should still be enough to keep our server running. So don't worry if you see this message guys, your server is still up and running. You should only be concerned if your server actually shuts down. However, in this case, as you can see, our server is running. Now to give yourself operator on your server, you're going to need to type the following command. Simply type op space and then your Minecraft username. In my case, guys, my Minecraft username is Websplaining. So I'm just going to type the word Websplaining. If your username has any capital letters, make sure you use them. As you can see, guys, I'm using a capital W in my Minecraft username. If you have a space in your username, guys, simply replace the space with an underscore. Once you've typed in your username, guys, hit enter on your keyboard, and then you'll be greeted with this notification which says, made Websplaining a server admin. So in here, guys, it will say your username. Once you've given yourself operator, guys, you can close out of the putty terminal window. Navigate to the top right-hand corner, press the X, you'll then receive this notification from Putty which says, Putty exit confirmation, are you sure you want to close this session? Simply left click on OK. You'll now be back on your browser. You can close the tab for the Minecraft Java Edition server download page. So I'm just going to do that now, guys. And you should now be back on the Linode website. We're now going to connect to our Minecraft server, guys. To do that, we're going to need to copy the IP address of our server and enter it into the server address. The IP address of our Minecraft server is 109.74.198. .129. So I'm just going to left click on the clipboard icon 
to copy it. Once you've copied the IP address of your server, you can close out of your browser. Next, we're going to need to launch Minecraft. So double click on your Minecraft launcher to open it. Once your Minecraft launcher has opened, left click on play to open Minecraft Java Edition. I'll be back with you guys once we're on the home screen of Minecraft. All right guys, we're on the Minecraft Java Edition home screen now. This time, we're going to be left clicking on multiplayer. You'll now be able to see a list of all the multiplayer servers you have added to your server list. Navigate to the bottom right hand corner and left click on add server. Under server name, give your server a name. So I'm going to left click in this text box. I'm going to delete what's there and I'm going to call my server Websplaining. For the server address guys, left click on it and in here we're going to paste the server address for our Minecraft server. So all I'm going to do is press Control plus V on my keyboard to paste in the IP address that we copied from our Linode server list. Once done guys, simply left click on done. Minecraft will then ping our server and add it to the multiplayer server list. And as you can see guys, the websplaining server has now been added to the server list. You can see there's no players connected and I'm going to be the first person on the server. As you can see guys, the server icon here is the same icon as your Minecraft single player world that now of course is a multiplayer server. Simply left click on it to select it and then left click on join server to be taken into your Minecraft server. And as you can see guys we're now inside our Minecraft server and we're in front of my house here. I'm just going to go into my house now and I'm going to open up this chest just to show you that everything has successfully transferred. So I'm just going to grab all the items here that I deposited into my chest. And I'm just going to go back outside here, guys, just to mention, of course, that all your builds and everything would have successfully copied over also. All right, guys, that pretty much concludes the video on how to turn your Minecraft Java Edition single player world into a 24-7 multiplayer server. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Why is it so